Hey guys, in today's video, we're checking out a very easy to use interface if you use multi-track backing tracks for your live show. We're checking out this guy right here. This is the Track Rig by Loop Community. It has eight XLR line level outputs and it can connect to your phone, tablet, or computer in order to have eight separate backing track outputs for your live shows. So you could have drums, bass, keyboards, strings, backing vocals, brass, click, and cues all on their own dedicated outputs, for example. It's extremely easy to use, and I've been using it this weekend at my live shows, and it's worked awesome. And the icing on the cake is that it also has these four USB inputs here on the back. And this is great because you can connect MIDI controllers, like a keyboard, or a MIDI controller, like for controlling your playback software. You can also use it to charge a phone or tablet. And actually, if you connect it to your computer, it acts just as a USB hub, so you can connect, you know, an external hard drive to it if you wanted to. This is unbelievably easy to set up, and it's a great option if you do multi-track backing tracks live with a computer or a tablet. So a lot of people have been doing backing tracks using this method, where this cable comes out of an iPad or something like that, and all the click and the cues are panned this way, and all the backing tracks are panned this way in mono. So that's an easy way to do it for sure. Couple of things with that is that all the tracks come down one mono channel. So if you have a lot of different backing tracks, you know, bass and keys and brass and stuff like that, they're all coming down just one channel. But with the track rig, you get eight separate outputs for eight different instruments to mix your backing tracks all individually, which is great. In addition to that, you can also utilize it for stereo backing tracks. Using this method, you can only do this in mono. So I've been wanting to do something like this for a while. So one of the bands that I play in, sometimes we play with the bass player, sometimes we have bass in the backing track, it just depends on the show. But using this method, that means that the keys and the brass and stuff like that are on the same channel as the bass. Those are two very separate instruments to mix. Using the track rig this weekend, where we could mix the bass separate from the keys and the strings and all the other backing tracks, made the mix sound so much better. Also, my drummer has also said that he wants to be able to turn up the click in his ears without turning up the cues. You know, the cues that go verse one, ready, go. You know, the cues that direct you on how to go with the song. We haven't been able to do that because the click and the cues have been together and you basically just turn them up or down. Now with this one, the click and the cues are on their own separate outputs and my drummer can adjust just the click track in his ears if he wants to do that without turning up the cues. Very cool. So I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I reached out to Loop Community to see if they were interested in having me review this for their channel, and they agreed, and they sent me one. So it's not a paid video or anything like that. All the opinions in this video are my own. If I didn't like this product, I wouldn't review it for my channel. So before we get started, this is a music tech channel. I do gear reviews, tutorials. I do gear giveaways on this channel. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to ring the bell, and hitting the like button is a free way to support the channel. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so making a connection is really easy for this setup. Plug in the provided power, and then they do give you both the options of this USB-C to USB-B, and then USB-A to USB-B. So the USB-B goes into the back of the track rig, and then either USB-A or USB-C goes into your tablet or your computer. My iPad takes USB-C, so that's what I'm gonna be using. I did find that using it with an iPad, I do want a little bit longer of a cable, so I will link to that down below. And also, if you're using an iPad with a lightning port, you're going to need an adapter, which I will also link to down below. Okay, so here's how to set it up with Ableton. You can do this in Logic or Pro Tools or Cubase or whatever. Ableton just seems to be the most common one, so that's the way I'm gonna demo it. But again, this thing is so easy to set up, you just connect it and it basically just finds it automatically on a Mac. If you are doing it on a PC, you do have to install a driver and I'll post that on the screen now so you can follow those steps in order to do that. But in Logic or Ableton, it just found it automatically. So here's how to set it up in Ableton. The process will be very similar in other DAWs. So go to your settings, shortcut is command comma, and then you're gonna go to the audio tab and you're just gonna make sure that your output device is set to the loop community track rig. Then you wanna click on this output config and you just wanna make sure that all of them are enabled. This will allow you to have mono and stereo outputs and to utilize all eight output channels on the track rig. So I have imported my stems. In this case, I have imported drums, bass, tracks, click, and cues. I'm just gonna do this with one song for now. I'll show you how it looks kind of at the end, but each stem is going to be in each of these individual columns. So 
this is for 24 karat magic. I'll do another one for 500 miles on the next row, but all of the stems will be in these columns right here. And then down here is where you do the configuration. So just something I like to do on all of my channels where I'm only outputting, I'm never gonna be getting any audio in. I like to set the audio from to no input. That just makes sure that no other audio comes through here, out these channels. I only want the backing tracks to go out these channels. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down here to the audio out. You're gonna set it to external out. And let's go ahead and set all of them to that just really quick. And then you're gonna choose which outputs these are gonna go out. So I'm gonna have the drums go out in stereo on outputs one and two. The bass I'm just gonna set to mono. I don't really need stereo bass. That's gonna go output three. The tracks are gonna be in stereo. Let's set that to five and six. The click is mono, which is gonna go out seven. And the cues are mono, and that's gonna go out eight. So now everything is routed properly to their proper outputs. So when it's done, it's gonna look something like this. I trigger all my songs over here. All the drum stems are in this column right here and they're routed to go out outputs one and two. The bass are all in this column right here, routed to go output three and so on and so forth. And then when I push play on a song, you can see that the track rig actually gives you these meters and indicators letting you know the audio level coming out of those outputs. It's really nice that it gives you that audio meter so you can tell if you need to turn up or turn down an output as well. I will give you an audio demo just to show you that this is working with it plugged in here in a minute. I just want to go over a few more things first. And if you do want a dedicated video on how to set up backing tracks in Ableton, leave a comment down below. And if I get enough comments, I'll do it. And just to prove this does work with other DAWs, so here's Logic Pro X. You go to your settings to audio, set the output to the track rig, just like we did in Ableton. And then on each of the individual stems, you just send them out which output you want. So drums, I would route output one and two. Bass is gonna go out output three, so on and so forth. Whatever DAW you're using, you just set the output routing to the correct outputs that you want. So I know many of you want to use this on an iPad as well. That's the way that I've been doing it live, and you can do that as well. The three most common apps are Stage Tracks, Multi Tracker, and Loop Community actually has their own app called Prime, which is available for the iPad and for desktop. So I have a three-part video series on Stage Tracks, and I have a full walkthrough on the Multi Tracker app. If you're interested in how to set up multi tracking, I went over that in those videos. So check those out. If you guys are interested in a full video on Loop Community's Prime app. App, let me know in the comments down below. But I do just want to show you that all of those apps just automatically recognized that the track rig was plugged in. I didn't have to configure anything else. It's just automatically found and you route it accordingly. Again, if you want to know how to do that, I'm not going to do that here. I already did that in these other videos. So check it out there. I just wanted to show you that it does work with iPad as well. And just so you can see how this is working, I have this connected just to a physical mixer. So obviously I'm not doing this in Ableton, I'm just doing this in stage track. So you can see that this does work with an iPad and you can see how this works. So I personally do all my backing tracks in mono. I know, how dare I? But I have this coming out of the track rig and it's going into this little mixer. So drums are coming out of output one and going into input one of the mixer. Bass is coming out of output three of the track rig and going into channel two. Click comes out here and goes into the third fader. And the cues come out of this one and go into the fourth fader. So now you can see as I'm playing music, you can see that I have individual control over each of the stems separately. Verse one, sing. And then don't forget, it also has these four USB inputs here on the back. So you can connect like a MIDI keyboard to play MIDI through your computer or your tablet. I have connected a MIDI controller that I'm going to use just to control stage tracks. You can see when I push this button, it's going to scroll the lyrics. I push this button and it goes to the next song. So this is connected to the track rig. So now I can send MIDI commands into stage tracks in order to control it by like scrolling lyrics and changing to the next song and stuff like that. And the cable is still going to pass the audio out of the USB-C out into the track rig. Very, very cool that you can do this. And again, don't forget, you can charge a phone or something with this port if you want. So I'm going to plug in my iPhone. And you can see it's charging my iPhone. And if you use this with the computer, you can also connect it like just any standard USB device. So you can connect a hard drive or something to it. And it acts just like another USB hub. Really, really cool design. I love that. So as of the time of shooting, this is listed at $499. I will have purchase links down below so you can purchase this for yourself. They were back ordered for a while. It does look like they are back in stock, but just FYI, they were back ordered for a while. But again, purchase links will be down below in the description if you want to pick one up for yourself.
Okay, so I used these at my shows over the weekend. It worked amazingly well. I used this with my Singer's Behringer XR16, and it worked really well. That one does have some quarter inch inputs, so I did have to get a few adapters in order to make it work. And I will link to that down below as well in case if you need some quarter inch adapters. But yeah, it worked really well. It was great having the bass separate from the backing tracks, like the strings and everything else. The low register versus the high register, just having separate control over that was really awesome. My drummer was very happy that he was able to turn up the click and turn down the cues in his ear, which is what he's been wanting for a while. Funny story though. First gig, this happened about 45 minutes into our set. No joke. The weather's been insane this year, and this was by far the worst one I've ever had. This showed up almost instantly. It was insane how fast this showed up, but the track rig got absolutely drenched. We had five of us trying to hold up our tent. It was way down. Five of us couldn't hold up this tent. The wind was so bad, so we had to bail and just let our gear get drenched. It sucked so much video coming about that soon so be sure to subscribe to see that video when it's out but the track rig is still working it got drenched in water and it is still working so that's definitely a plus the power supply got fried that was fried that didn't work i tried plugging it in it did not work but the track rig itself is working and i've been using something called the rip cord which is a usb power device. Really cool. You can power your gear with USB power. You'd have to understand a few things, but I do have a review on that product if you're interested in that as well. Might be worth getting even just as a backup power supply. So overall, I don't think there's an easier way to get multi-track backing tracks output. This thing is so easy to use. I love that. Like I said, I didn't even have to use the manual at all to figure out how to set this thing up. I love that it has the option of the four different USB inputs. That's great for using, you know, MIDI controllers to control your gear, especially if you use it with like an iPad or something like that. Because with the iPad, you basically have the one port. And if you need to get, you know, a MIDI foot controller to go in there as well, using that one port, you're basically done. And also that it expands on your ports on your computer. Just really cool. It's just really well designed. So I'm a big fan of it. And if you are interested in purchasing this, purchase links will be available down below in the description. So that's basically it. I hope this helped you guys out. If you'd made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. I'm assuming that means you found it helpful and it does a ton to help out the YouTube algorithm and recommend my channel to more people. So I would appreciate it. If you're interested in how I set up my backing tracks, I have a full explainer video going you through every single step that I do for creating my backing tracks. It's definitely a deep dive. A lot of people have said it's very helpful for them. So I'll link to that at the end of the screen. Also, don't forget to check out that video on the ripcord for USB power for your gear. Check out both of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Scott Yule Music. That's where I've been posting all of my horror stories with the weather this year as well. But yeah, thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.